this. Well, here he is, Mike Squires. Uh, you, you've been uh, very inspirational for me in the last year or so because I am a huge fan of what you have started and developed with Couch Riffs. Um, I think the idea is great. We're going we're gonna to talk all about Couch Riffs and everything uh, between, but you know what? We have to go back to go forward. And Let's that's the way it. we start every show because I think the it, it's important to sort of, you know, catch up a, a little bit on your history of, you know, what has brought you to the here and now and with everything that you're doing with Cow Trips because yeah. you are – now, are you a guitarist first? Because I because when we did our thing together on Cow Trips, you were a bassist. And right. uh, do you consider yourself guitarist first or musician overall? I mean, the first, you know, cool instrument that I played was the guitar. You know, when I was a kid, when I was in high school, I, was, I got my first guitar when I was a freshman and nobody wanted to play bass. I didn't even know what a bass did, you know. Yeah. It just was like the thing that the board person did in <laughs> in in the band room because he just like, dun, 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 dun. You know, I didn't well, let's admit it that the only two cool bass players for me growing up, and I'm not sure how far we are apart in age, but the only two cool bass players that would that would top the charts, well, not oh, I shouldn't say only two cool, but the ones that I looked up to were either John Taylor from Duran Duran or Nikki Six from Motley Crue. Those were the ones that were always top bassist in Circus uh -oh. Magazine year after year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I mean, the list goes on. You know, you have. Uh... Lemmy for sure. Okay. Um, yes, Lemmy. I'm schooled. Uh, there you go. The Who cool, else? The Stan coolest. Stanley the coolest. Clark was always one. <laughs> the coolest. I right. mean, but yeah, those the the two guys that you pointed out were they were almost like the two ends of the spectrum. Like, you know, Nikki Six was like the like he was the guy in in rock bands in the eighties that everyone wanted to be. Right. It's true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, not celebrated for his playing, but on the other hand. Um, Both of them, to be honest with you, John Taylor and Nikki Six. I don't know how this turned into a symposium on bass playing, but it, let's turn it into it. This is In the Trenches, bass player edition. Uh, but <laughs> the thing is, John, John Taylor. Taylor is stud bass player. Stud. And, and you know what? I, I actually, I DM Nikki six. Yes. I name dropped that. And I am telling you that I have his DM. Um, I DM Nikki six the other day because I got caught in that sort of YouTube rabbit hole of, uh, just going down videos and going from yeah. one artist to the other. I ended up at Motley Crue, uh, live in Moscow, 1989. Oh yeah. No, no backing tracks, nothing. Nikki Six was so friggin' solid. His bass playing was amazing. Obviously, Mick Mars was laying down the wrist. Vince was running back and forth, back and forth. And 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 Tommy was just doing his thing. But what really stuck out was Nikki Six's bass playing. So I thought both Nikki and John Taylor back in those old, early days were sort of more touted for their image. I don't think they get got, got enough credit for their playing. Absolutely. Okay. And I, yeah, I think. 89, arguably, peak of Motley Crue's powers, right? Yeah, of course. Peak. Yes. So, and, and I would be amiss if I didn't say, yeah, from the from the comments, Chuck Garrick shirtless is one hell of a bass player as well. Right? <laughs> you, you have to give him that. Oh, you have to throw McCartney in. Well, yeah, of course McCartney's a stud bass player. I mean, there, yeah, there are John Paul Jones, you know, the Ox. Like, there, the list goes on for sure. But I didn't. I didn't really care because I picked up a guitar in 1986 and, uh, you know, what was hot then was like flashy guitar playing. And that's what I wanted to do. You know, that's okay. what, that's what I wanted to do. And I never really developed into all that, you know, like. My I don't know about that. You you've been listed as a lead guitar player in, in in a bunch of bands that that I went down the list. And why I say you are so much in the trenches candidate is that you've been in about a hundred bands. You know, and and I've been in a bunch of bands. And but I mean, you know, you don't you don't have to be Steve Vai to play in a rock band. Like, and more accurately, like Steve Vai doesn't belong in ACDC, right? And 
Perfect. Michael Schenker doesn't, <laughs> like Michael Schenker doesn't belong in not a surf. You know, like there are all these, I don't know. I've been in a lot of different kinds of bands, like, you know, metal bands, rock bands, uh, indie rock bands. Uh, That's but, where know. I saw a lot of your, a, a lot of the bands, because the bands that you've been in, honestly, of all the research that I've done for all the different podcasts over the, over the last year within the trenches, your bands have the coolest names. <laughs> I mean, there's, indie bands always have the, the, the coolest names. You know, Eat the Feeling, Nevada Bachelors, uh, Harvey Danger, Alien Crime Syndicate, The Long Winters, The Western State Hurricanes. They're all, they all sound like something like, shit, I'm, I, I don't know if I, if I deserve. <laughs> I don't right. know if I can afford the cover into that club to see that band. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. I mean, yeah, I don't know. But the way I became a bass player was I when I moved to Seattle. I had a Jackson. You know, it was nineteen ninety January nineteen ninety three. So I had a Jackson and an amp with built-in chorus and you know nobody wanted to have anything to do with me i was a few years <laughs> behind you know i like i grew up in the woods and didn't even have cable you know so i'd have to go to a friend's house to watch to see mtv and that kind of thing you know there was no internet then uh when i was tr trying to learn music i was learning off of records so basically you 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 basically grew up like the unabomber or how the Unabomber ended up, <laughs> sort of like in a cabin, the cabin, way out in the yeah. woods. <laughs> you, you were the Unishredder. Maybe that could have been the name of one of your bands that you played right. in. But, <laughs> but again, doing the research, I found that, you know, you are, because we met on the East Coast, but then right. by doing the research, I found that you're more of a Northwest guy. In fact, so much, you were born in Concord, California, which is NorCal, which a lot of our guests come from. And you said you moved around a lot in the Northwest, but those towns included growing up Northern California, uh, Oregon, and then finally, yeah. like you said, set, settling on Seattle. I, I didn't move to Oregon until I was a, an adult. I lived in Portland twice, but, um, but yeah, I, as a kid, I was in Northern California around the Bay area and went back one year. And that's where I kind of got into hard rock and metal. That was a, that was a the scene. Oh, the dude, scene. Well, it was 84 that year when I was in the seventh grade and thrash metal was King, you know? Yeah. I mean, Ride the Lightning was the new Metallica record then. Wow. The new Metallica yeah, record that was the, that was the <laughs> one, you know? So, uh, yeah, we moved to Washington, you know, out way far away. But that then it became a lot harder to be introduced to new music. I'd have to, I had to take a three bus transfers from my town to go to a record store. And go get the Rocket magazine, which was the Seattle sort of magazine. I would just thumb through it and fantasize like, man, one day maybe I could, you know, when I'm old enough, I could live in Seattle and maybe I could have, a, maybe I could have a band, you know, <laughs> like. Me, well, one me. thing leads to another because you have this, you have this Jackson bass, and you have the, the amp with the built-in chorus, and at that point, no one wants to hear from you, but you eventually settle in. Nobody wants to have anything to do with me. I have, it wasn't, it wasn't a bass. It was a guitar, a Jackson oh, guitar with a Floyd yeah. Rose. And so I meet these guys um, and, you know, and they were a good band. They were, they were tight. They, they sounded definitely like post grungy, but they were also a little bit jammy. And I was just like, I talked to them afterwards. Cause I, I mean, I'd been in, Seattle for four months and and hadn't met anyone and I was working and I was gr digging graves in a cemetery and I was just like what, what am I gonna yeah that was my first job that was, that was one of your gigs I, I've had a lot of jobs man and but so, that's but I want to hear a little bit more about that like yeah. how did you apply for that how did you find out like hey man maybe digging graves is the is a the buddy gig. of mine this guy Jeremy uh that I grew up with he was like one of my closest friends growing up and also like he lived closest to me. I went to the Marine Corps. He moved to Seattle and 
you know, when I got out of the Marine Corps, he was like, Hey, why don't you move to Seattle? Yeah. Why don't you move to Seattle and uh, we'll get a house. And I think I could get you a job at this cemetery where I'm working. I was like, that sounds kind of weird, man. And he's like, it's just not all that weird. Like we'd done, we'd work together summer jobs and after school jobs doing landscaping and like labor kind of gigs before, you know, so he was like, it's kind of just the same as that. It's like landscaping, but digging deeper, six yeah, feet, probably much. deeper. Just pretty about. <laughs> I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method. Hello folks, Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type. <laughs>